Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a fabulous week so far. I'm using this picture in honor of Princess Catherine's birthday, which was on the 9th. Uh, there is a lot to cover in here, but before we do, I have a sponsor, Aura. So I want you guys to listen to this. Do you guys know that it can take over six months to recover from the impact of identity theft? Do you know that your personal information is already exposed, whether you like it or not? We know how the internet works. Things online that are inaccurate can cost you a job, higher interest rates, all kinds of trouble. And did you know that 40% of the information that data brokers have is completely inaccurate? How many times have you guys heard about the financial fraud that goes on? People opening up bank accounts and taking out car loans and mortgages in your name without your knowledge. Did you know that last year Americans lost over $10.3 billion to online crimes and there are new scams coming out every day? So let me give you some information about a company that I am now using named Aura. Aura is an all-in-one tool powered by AI that helps protect your family from cyber scams and financial fraud. When it comes to financial fraud, every second counts. Aura can detect credit inquiries and deliver alerts within minutes. You can even lock down your Experian file with a tap for fast security. And with this company, you have what's called the Aura Promise, a million dollars in coverage for eligible losses, 24-7 expert fraud support, transparent pricing, a 60-day money-back guarantee, and a free trial with no strings attached. Just go to the description box and click on the link to take you to Aura for a two-week free trial. Give Aura a try, you guys. You've got nothing to lose except your money. Super important, you guys, and not a joke. You guys can Google this stuff. It's terrible what's going on. All right, we have a lot to cover. Let's jump in there and get there, shall we? Let's go. We're going to start off today with Zara and Mike. We already know that they're in Australia on the Gold coast they're at the pacific fair magic millions polo and show jumping event she showed up in this gorgeous nautical outfit with the uh, hat and the glasses looking absolutely effortless apparently it's quite warm in australia and mike looked really good with the uh you know navy blazer and the tie and the beige pants and this is an event where you have professional polo players including zara nacho who's you know harry's little buddy and his wife played two games so they stood around drinking champagne and then she changed into her jumping clothes doesn't he look fabulous this man has an look how wide his shoulders are in comparison to his waist which is really small Ooh. All right. Yep. She gave him a smooch while she was on the horse. Anyway, they decided they were going to play polo. Just as an FYI on the side, there were three show jumping competitions that had Olympic competitors. There was live entertainment. There was very summery activities that the guests could enjoy. And Zara, it was announced, would also be riding in the Magic Millions Queensland Off the Track Cup Final as the Celebrity Wild Card. And these are horses that have finished their racing career. And so they were being given the opportunity, I guess, to have another career and that's what this is all about they're saying the welfare of the horses and how they're looked after on and off the track for those of you who may be unaware the magic millions racing women achievement award which is an award that's given out celebrates the quote outstanding national success and achievements by women in the thoroughbred industry there were five judges zara was one of the five judges and they presented the awards to um, the winners at a dinner that took place the night before Yep, and a big thank you to Remy Lod Sauce for all the information on what she was wearing. Now again, uh, Harry's friend Nacho was playing polo at the same time. Apparently he leaned down to hit the ball, lost his balance, and fell off the horse. Well, he didn't completely fall off. He managed to get control of the horse, keep on with his mallet, and managed to right himself somehow. And his wife 
who, by the way, was playing also in a bright pink helmet, yay wife, uh, apparently had absolutely no issues. I was unaware that his wife, that Nacho's wife, was also a polo player. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, really quickly, Zara Tyndall's best friend, her name is Dolly Ma Maud, and she helps deliver babies, and she helped deliver Lucas on the floor of the bathroom at her house, is apparently going to be named a lady-in-waiting to Princess and the Princess Royal, and that's going to happen on February 1st at Buckingham Palace. I think that's very nice. Let's move on now to King Charles. These kinds of headlines really upset me. He breaks cover for the first time since the Prince Andrew thing came out. Guys, it was Sunday. He went to church. He always goes to church. I don't know how anything about Prince Andrew would have stopped him from going to church. And he went to church, by the way, with Lady Susan Hussey. I, I mean, wh what is it with these constant headlines always making it seem like the royal family's in complete turmoil and upheaval when they're not? <laughs> like, I don't get that. Now, something caught Charles's attention as he was going to church, but he didn't stop to really pay attention to it until he was on his way back from church. Let me explain. So obviously, as you can see, he's walking. There's his really tall equerry with him. There's Lady Susan Hussey. And he walks up and what do you think he sees? Little kids in a little Range Rover. Now let me explain. This kid, first of all, he rode the toy car in to see King Charles while he was on his way to Sandringham. Funny, the police pulled him over. License and registration, please. And they gave this poor kid <laughs> A mock ticket. I think it's absolutely hilarious. I see stuff like this in the United States where the police pull over little kids in electronic vehicles. So cute. Now, the car that they were in was a green Land Rover. By the way, the boys were six and three, and the plate on the back said William. So the car had been made by uh, the father-in-law of one of the parents, and they so sweet. And they went to see... King Charles, and he came back and was questioning whether it was handmade, whether it ran, if it uses pedals. You know, he was joking around with the kids. Are they crashing into trees? I just think that is so sweet. Moving on, I just want to bring this up really quickly. It's being reported that Omid is going to be sued by the Dutch publishers. <clears throat> I believe after what he did, I think he should be sued. But you know who should be doing the suing? The woman who actually did that, who was accused of adding the names and who had all these people camping at her house causing all kinds of trouble. Absolutely, she should sue. Okay, moving on. This next story, somehow I, I believe it. I know it sounds crazy, but I believe it because we know that Queen Elizabeth was so legendary because she had grace and she knew what to say and when not to say it. And she was just, you know, very careful of the things that she said. Apparently, a month before she died, she called Meghan evil during a drinks reception at uh, Balmoral in August of 2022. She said she felt bad that Harry had stepped away uh, from his duties. She branded Meghan evil. And uh, they said everybody's eyes, eyebrows just went up to the ceiling because it was so out of character for her to say stuff like that. But at the drinks before dinner and a small group were talking and explaining, she explained Harry meeting Meghan had become a catastrophe. And at that point, they're saying in the article, they knew the queen was dying. She months left. And um, yeah, I think the queen did have regrets. I think the queen regretted giving permission for them to marry. Moving on. Next up, I had to touch on this article saying that the big brands don't see Harry and Meghan's value. I mean, let's be honest. They got contract with Spotify simply for who they were, but they couldn't deliver the goods. That got canceled. They got called grifters. They got this huge um, contract with Netflix. They haven't really produced anything. They're contract, I think next year, in my opinion, is going to be canceled. She's desperate. Megan is desperate for endorsements of a major brand. Nobody wants them. They tried to do it with Dior. Dior came out and said, absolutely not. I think she's wanting to open, reopen the TIG. The problem is you have to get people to want to work with you on the Instagram account. I don't think people want to work with her. She and Harry have nothing to offer. The next story that came out said that if Harry and Meghan want to get back to royal life, it's very simple. Just use Archie and Lilibet. How many times have I told you guys that those children are nothing but a commodity? 
<sighs> At this point, I don't think even using the kids will get them back in. They're not trusted. We all saw, we know that at the funeral, Harry was mic'd up. We all saw it. We saw Megan was mic'd up. They were trying to get conversations. That's Harry was complaining. Can't we come together and honor Granny? Nobody wanted to talk to him because he was mic'd up. He and Megan are untrustworthy. Do you guys remember when they were standing on the stairs in the palace waiting for the queen's body to come back and Charles was on the step and Harry and Megan were behind them? Anybody notice Megan is staring straight out at the camera? That's because it was alleged that she told people what was going to happen and there was a camera waiting to take the picture. Yep, moving on. Let's move on now to Andrew. And as I stated yesterday, they're trying so hard, it's being reported, to remove him from his mansion. The problem is he has a lease. The only way he can break that lease is if he can prove that he's not living up to it. Like, for instance, in the lease, he has agreed to take care of the property. If he's not taking care of the property and it's falling apart, then he would have grounds to remove him. This is, I mean, I, this is what I don't get. He wants to drow, downgrade him to Frogmore Cottage, which is smaller, which is still on the Windsor Estate, which doesn't need any renovations. It's already been redone top to bottom. So I really don't understand why Andrew is fighting so hard to stay in this other house. I think what's going on here, listen, they've already said he won't come back to public duty, but when it comes to private events, he's still a member of the family, but the king has to put the monarchy first and that's what he's doing. He's making sure that Andrew never conducts another royal engagement and he's removing him from a significant royal residence on the Windsor estate. Apparently, it's being reported that Catherine and William have their eye on the royal lodge for their own young family because they're currently in Adelaide Cottage, which is really, really small. Now, we know that Andrew was asked to move into Frogmore Cottage after it was vacated, but he rejected it, saying he needed the space. But don't let's not forget that the king cut his annual grant, and so it's been speculated that because of the mounting costs, that Andrew was going to default on his lease, because as part of the lease, uh, he has to ensure that things are done on the house. So therefore, if he defaults, He's out, and that may be how they're going to do it. Hmm. All right, moving on. Next up, I had to touch on this. We know that Harry is fighting the UK government because he wants bigger security. So in the legal documents, he claimed that when he was leaving the Well Child Awards charity event in 2021 in July, that there was so much paparazzi, he was put in a dangerous situation. The problem is when the footage came out, he was leaving, there was no paparazzi in sight. None. So this just shows once again, he's lying to try to get what he wants. And I agree with Alf, this reeks of desperation. This is just like the New York chase, which we all know never happened. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Next up, uh, the rumor mill is that Harry and Meghan's neighbors are sick of them. And so they're very close to selling their home. I think it's also the point that the home uh, is $11 million and they're looking at a $3 million home in Malibu, which just proves what I've been saying all along. They're having financial problems. But, uh, you know, according to the neighbors, they're annoyed by their quote unquote traveling soap opera amid their dramatic life in the spotlight. People who like them seem to have an unlimited tolerance no matter what they do and uh, because they want to be tied to the prince, but everybody else is either unimpressed or just sick of hearing about them. Moving on. This is one of our bigger stories for today. Apparently, a prestigious book that celebrates Sandhurst's top alumni uh, is being put out, and Harry is being left out of the book. He did not make the military academy's top 200 people to, cha to train there, even though Prince William made the cut and even penned the foreword in the exclusive book. Now, it's being said that one of the reasons why they left him out was when he said that, you know, the people he killed were like chess pieces that, you know, it, it made people angry who said that, you know, they don't teach 
them to think of people like that. And they said that also he didn't do anything particularly notable in his service. He was a significant person to go to Sandhurst, but um, the recent disharmony between him and the royal family has meant that they don't want him in the book. People who did make the cut, Winston Churchill, Oscar winner David Niven, Nigerian president. Yeah, these are the people who made it. Um, astronaut Tim Peake, polar explorer Preet Chandy. And under Prince William's page, it says that because William had the future duty as king, he could not be deployed on military duty like the younger brother, Harry. Now, when Harry came out with the book, just as an FYI reminder, Bob Stewart said that, um, you know, and he quoted, I'm quoting him. He said, I wonder why Harry does these things because real soldiers tend to shy away. People I know don't boast about these things. They regret that they had to do them. And once there was a public outcry, Harry came out and said, I wasn't boasting. People spun my words. It's the dangerous media. They spun my words. But when the book came out, come to find out, he didn't spin his words. That's exactly what he said. Typical Harry. And I agree with this Twitter user. Harry, by his own admittance in the book Spare, spent more time drunk and on drugs than he did performing his duties, and he failed his exams. Yep. And we're going to close this down with some more craziness from the sugars, because remember we saw, um, and I pointed it out if you're on my Patreon in yesterday's video, that they said that Basically, all of the people in suits don't have Megan's number. Essentially, she used them. She cut them off. She's not in contact with them anymore. And some of the sugars put out, they're lying. They're just saying that to protect Megan because they love Megan. Megan loves them. When actually, that's not what's going on. Megan used them, had them come to the wedding, and they haven't spoken to her since. She's cut them off. Well, some more tweets came out. My gosh, you guys. I mean, these people are absolutely crazy. Meghan Markle was not invited to this Golden Globe. She wasn't. But according to her fan base, it was either she was busy. Number two, it was going to need extra security. Number three, she agreed to skip it because of the level of misogyny. Number four, she knew that there were going to be jokes slamming the royal family and she didn't want Harry to be upset. Like we've heard every excuse under the sun why she wasn't there. But what really got me was a tweet from one of the sugars, you guys, like my goodness. According to this sugar, uh, Megan has a royal court at the Golden Globes. Oprah, Sarah, Gina, Orlando, Kevin Costner, they're all there for Megan, who wasn't there. All right, you guys. Now, don't forget the link for Aura is in the description box. Also in the description box is the link to my Patreon, where I am now uh, posting three days a week as well as the three days a week on YouTube. Don't forget to leave those comments below because you know I'm reading them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you've donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.